right, it's that time for our special guest. You know, everyone give it up for music, <laughs> music supervisor extraordinaire, Maureen Crow. Oh, yeah! yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I tongue twisted myself, you know? Maureen, welcome. Welcome to the hot tub, you know? Hey. You have Feeling been good. Thank, you Thank you for finally getting in. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Because you've been to many parties. You've been to the, you know, you've been to the Mint, you've been to the Highlands, you've been, you know, since it started. Wherever you are, John, that's where I am. Back when it was the film and TV music mixer. That's you know, right. We, you were, it still you, is kind of. And Dominic. Of course, of course, exactly. In Beverly Hills. Cat and Fiddle, Cat and Fiddle. Cat, oh, Cat and Fiddle. Stuff, Oasis, you know? the Oasis. <laughs> we love going through the old venues. <laughs> This is the best. It is. Oh my God, the mint is the fantastic. Mint is we the love best. it. We no, love it. No question it. about it. No doubt about it. So, uh, but this is the first time you're actually here, a hot tubbing, and uh, you know, sharing, sharing a, a bit of your story with us all tonight. You know. Yeah, it's great. You know, and Alan Orkish is here as a director that I worked with when I first got nice. started on the TV series Fame. Wow, wow. You thought that show would live forever? Yes. <laughs> and my favorite I episode. You how to fly. The Monster That Devoured Las Vegas, all original material. Thank you very much. And it yeah, was that's great a big, that's a big yeah, step. All right, so where did you, are you, you're not an LA native, right? Where did you originally come Long from? Island. Long, from Long Island. I'm from Long Island, repopulating the world. East Coast. Yes. All right, all right. East Coast in the house. Yeah. Were, you, and, were um, you active in the music program at school? You know, were you, I was. Uh, I was in Glee Club. I'm a good Irish Catholic girl. Went to Glee Club and we had a lot of musical. I remember my first musical. Uh, music appreciation course, I think, was in third grade. Yeah. Where we listened to uh, Morning in Pure sure. Gint and, you know, how it visually, you know, musically it sat, felt like the dawn and everything else. And, uh, and did theater, a lot of musical theater growing up in high yeah. school. And that's really where I kind of started. Besides, yeah, the passion, started. The passion. Really, the passion you know? was really tough. And that probably that music. made you like just a, you know, just like a listening, like a fan, pop records, you know, anything that's popping, oh, coming out, you yeah. were probably absorbing. Everything. I, well, I'm one of six kids. And so there was, you know, an older brother who was playing rock and roll and we were listening to pop and yeah. musicals and everything else. So it was a pretty, yeah. pretty broad and li living in Manhattan. I mean, you have, you know, I saw opera in grammar school. We, you know, went to ballet, we did all that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah I had a great general music background. And, uh, and then one of my first gigs uh, at a new house was uh, doing a series on upstate New York and uh, mm. at a PBS station. Wow. And they had a classical station and the guy was, you know, supervising the shows, giving us all classical music. And I'm like, well, I think I'm going to use these pop songs. Yeah, yeah. You Spun know, it around and, a little bit. Yeah. And, and they were okay was, with that? And you... They were a little surprised, like, well, we don't usually do that. Yeah. But it was very effective. Were you, and it was were you in that place where you actually, did you have to clear those songs? Did you have a Well, they had a blanket license. I didn't right, know so enough about the it. music business then. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, it wasn't until yeah. I came out to California that <laughs> yeah. I learned about the music business when I started working with Ken Ehrlich, um, who yeah. produces the Grammys. And yeah. uh, on the TV show when he yeah. said, basically, hey, kid, go find me some of the music for the show. And I was like, okay. Then I learned about the whole music industry. Nice. Brad wow. Rosenberger's here. And Brad, one of exactly. My Warner Chapel. Early contacts, you know. You know exactly. To, That's a big publishing company to have someone close else. to, you know. Of exactly. So it was great. Great That's education. Nice. So now when did you come out to, uh, to California, though? What, what brought you... From the, from the East Coast to the West Coast? You know, really it was, I thought, friends of mine were going out there and, um, you know, I was working 18 hours a day at this local station and I just said, well, if I want to go to California, I'll check it out for a couple of years. Yeah. I came out here and didn't really know anyone and uh, volunteered on some uh, student films mm -hmm. and one of the students got invited back for a second year at AFI and... They told him you have to replace yourself, and he was the assistant music coordinator hiring sideline musicians like Ricky Minor and yeah. various people like that. And um, I just learned the business from there. And I think the fact that I had musical theater background sure. and also um, production that I was yeah. a good fit for it. Yeah. And then it was off to the races. Like I said, yeah, no yeah, one would once, hire me to do anything else. Yeah, well, <laughs> once you start, you know, stepping up and being, you're calling yourself a music supervisor. You right. know, then, you know, other people go, hey, I need someone to help me. And, you know, yeah, you it was, check out it was early days, really. You know, and Becky Mancuso had been doing Footloose and yeah. Urban Cowboy. She's going to be honored at the Guild Awards yeah. uh, on Thursday. Yeah. And, you know, it became this whole thing because as directors and writers started writing their stories, it involved music. 
you yeah. know, it was about their lifestyles, which was uh, very eclectic depending on, you know, what part, what your story was. If it sure. was Footloose or if it was Urban Cowboy or if it was, you know. What the Bodyguard. Yes, the Bodyguard. Yeah, exactly, yes. exactly. You have been involved in some really big projects, you know, in yes, your, your tenure. Yes, very fortunate, yes. Bodyguard's, of course, uh, one of them. Uh, I love uh, Wayne's World, you know. Wayne's, Wayne's World. World. That was a big, big project, you know, big music. This is kind of Wayne's world yeah, here we go. Very much right. like Wayne's Shaw. World, of course. <laughs> String, yeah. <laughs> And Chicago, which I just freaking love that film. Yeah, and, uh, Chicago, yeah. We almost made the playlist tonight of He Had It Coming, but I decided to back off of that. Yeah, exactly. I get it, I get it. I get when it. you're good to mama, mama's good to you. <laughs> you know, just little subliminal messages out there. Yeah, exactly. But that was phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, Rob Marshall was just a phenomenal director, and it was one of those really magical things that yeah. really came together. Yeah. And, uh and with Harvey Weinstein, another man in the news. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. You Never know. heard of him. <laughs> he doesn't exist anymore. There you go. We've 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 pushed no him out of the. We've yeah, pushed we him out of the, the. No hot tub with we, Harvey. We no say, time. We don't yeah. say the T word or the W word, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's the T word? That's like, oh man, you can't uh, say it. It's I don't like know. Never mind. Presidential. It takes a lot of different types oh, of people. Oh, that guy. Yeah, a lot thought, of different types of people. I thought people. it was like tennis or something. No, no, no. Yeah, so now, exactly. You're supervising films. You know, uh, you start becoming a you know, pretty big name in the supervision world, yeah, and luckily, then yeah. Arista Records. That was Clive Davis. You know. Yeah. Well, when I, I actually, when I was working on The Bodyguard, you know, I worked for the film. I yeah. didn't really have any record experience. Yeah. So when I will always love you was such a huge hit. I remember telling David Foster, like, "Wow, this is really good. It's like number one before the film is out." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, that's really good." It's really yeah, good. Yeah. And like years later on a panel, he's like, I thought you were being facetious. Like, like no, I really didn't really know yeah, the, like, the time, record geez, industry at all. Fun. So um, I first went to Columbia and worked for Donnie Einer for three years and then went over to work for Clive for three yeah, years. Yeah. But um, then that's really when I really kind of worked for him because yeah. on The Bodyguard, it was, you know, really working for Whitney and for Kevin and, and getting the album together for him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. So, yeah, so it was, yeah, I, I was a great experience working at Columbia because, you know, it's Donny a, Honor's a huge, uh, huge you know, record, record label industry. industry guy. It has so much music and they, it's very entrepreneurial where you get to do a lot of stuff. I think I did about 10 soundtracks a year there. Yeah. And then at Arista, it's a much closer family, kind yeah. of a kind of a different thing. And so I learned a great deal and then went back and uh, did films for Warner Brothers like Perfect Storm yeah. and, uh, and then went on to Chicago. Well, the cool thing like about, you know, what you do is that you uh, are often really, truly focused on creating a great soundtrack album along with supplying the music for the film. Yeah. You know, like truly albums that will sell through and stand on their own long after people stop even seeing the film so well that's that, yeah that's, that's kind that's of a rare that's kind of a rare side that's a rare sort of side you're for always trying to replicate the big chill right, <laughs> right? no it's not just all licensing that, she's renew songs well, and, well, songs, well yeah. but in terms of licensed music success, on a soundtrack the success like that. of a six of a soundtrack record some of yeah. it's ex most <laughs> lot of it's existing you know, it's the story, basically. I think that's true yes. for all of this. Like, you know, when you're working on a project and depending on... I think that's what was so hard about doing this just mix. Because yeah. I said, I, I'm used to finding out, like, well, who's the character? Yeah. You know, like, you know, what's the story? What's the through line? Where do they live? Where it's the location? You know, what kind of people do they hang out with? Did what you have to sign a lot of NDAs to get that information early? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no? <laughs> so, um, you know, that's that's really if you're, you know, if you're, you know, so much of it is just kismet, you know, the actors, the music, the direction yeah. and the audience, whether the audience accepts the idea or not, you know, yeah. and, and having fun with it, you know, and being able to uh, let people shine. You haven't failed yeah, yet. Sure. sure. So that's good. Well, that's good. Obviously, you didn't look too deeply into IMDb. <laughs> There are always highs there, and lows to anyone's to any supervisor's many There's no failures. <laughs> <laughs> Student films, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You didn't so, do Ishtar, did you? I think what's I mean, wonderful about now is because there's so many stories and so yeah. many different types of people that are telling their stories and different angles. And so, you know, as long as it rings true and authentic, it's yeah. it should work, you know, yeah. if it's if it's really... Try and tell the story of the characters 
and the people here. I mean, of all the people that are here today, if we focused on any individual person, they would all have their very individual playlist based on who they are and what they're about and what they want, what, what they're afraid of. What so song would you pick for Johnny to, to synchronize to Johnny? <laughs> all night long, man. All night long? Yeah. All right. All right. I'll take that. That's about I'll right. Take that. That's off the top of my head. Yeah, you know? the, the, the All Night Long by, uh, you know, Lionel Richie. Just making sure. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, that's the yeah. one, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. It could be, could be uh, Joe Walsh. Going all on. Night Long. You know. yeah, exactly. Party, a party, party man. I'll take that for sure. Yeah. Fiesta forever. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and through all, throughout your sort of uh, career, you know, you've always given back to the industry, been very active in a lot of uh, wonderful charities. You started charities, this thing. And truly started an organization to really help benefit the music supervisors in the community called the Gilda Music Supervisors. Yeah. When was that? It was yeah. like uh, eight years ago, yeah. six years ago, ten years ago? Well, yeah, you know, it started about... Yeah. yeah. About ten years ago, yeah. uh, when I was the president of the L.A. chapter, um, the first female president, which I found out subsequently, but, um, you know, they wanted educated voters to be voting on this because it's a membership organization, so yeah. you have to be a member in order to vote yeah. and certain things. And since I was a voting member, I was encouraged by the Recording Academy to run for office because it would represent, you know, encourage other women to join the yeah. Academy and step up to go. kind of be involved. Spice Girl Brown Breaker so style. so I was uh, happy to do it. And, uh, and, Hashtag. Uh, and then, you know, learned a lot about the Recording Academy and then really, you know, wanted to get voting rights and music supervisors, which we did. Yep. And we had all the music supervisors come out. And I think Don Soler said, well, wait a minute. Uh, where's the curtain? I mean, isn't there a band you want us to see? Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't have us come out here just to say you're recognizing us as a craft. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, that's it. We're doing There's that. No, that's what we're doing. <laughs> and then award status came, and because we changed it into a craft, that it was a craft, that you have to know what you're doing to be a music supervisor, supposedly, that, um, you know, it changed the conversation at the Television Academy, voting rights, award status. And so, you know, the hope is that the Motion Picture Academy will, Music Branch will come on board. And, and then the big picture is really to help, um, to really set up some kind of system where people that work in music as freelancers can benefit from some kind of healthcare yeah, and support. benefits, like yeah. composers, songwriters, exactly. music supervisors, yeah. producers, engineers. And, Much um, appreciated. Can a songwriter get some health care? Come on. Exactly. It was a nice Come dream on, you know? before 2016. <laughs> well, I'm a big. So I, well, I'm I'm a big about health care. I'm a big advocate of you know that uh, there's something called a cue sheet that uh, yeah. little What's pennies. That? Little I worked pennies. at I worked at yeah. certain uh, broadcasters. What is that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that little pennies can add up to a lot. And if there was a health care, you know, little tax or whatever. On every Q sheet, that, you know, Superman you three formula for Q help sheets. Help fund uh, healthcare and you know a safety net for people that give us such great efforts in bringing music yeah. to people and everything else. So, but yeah. you know, well, a step great, by a step. great, a great victory is being uh, recognized with the Emmys. You know, yeah. and yeah. Uh, supervisors actually being uh, nominated for uh, supervision for a television. Show, well, you know, it's really great. about the value of music. You know what I mean? Everybody loves music, <clears throat> but, you know, they need to appreciate that all the time and energy, not only the writers and the performers and the engineers and producers and the music supervisors and yeah. the DJs and everybody else and composers do to bring that music to all these media projects. And sure. so the idea is that I think all music people should kind of band together not just compete, but band together to elevate the value of music. Every, everyone band gets, everyone together. Gets credit. Yeah. yeah. I think nice, it's nice. I think it's amazing though that the costs of making music and recording it and you know and, and you know putting it out have significantly lowered and that's directly like so is the so is the compensation for it. Like you couldn't make music you know, in the nineteen seventies economy with what you get paid for it now. Mm. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you it's, could, you couldn't, you couldn't tough. afford to go to the studio. It cost you a thousand dollars a day. Yeah, it's um, more. Yeah, exactly. Well, yes, it's been a great democratization of music. 
in terms of being able to write, but you still need to be good. And there's right. still, there's and still, still expensive records being made. And it still takes a lot of time and energy. And, Sometimes. And, and, you know, there's the great foo, The artists. Foo Fighters, that's it. <laughs> Who else is making a million dollar record? Right, you know, but you know, you, you hear, you know, all these artists, and you know it, it's one song at a time and you know they write and constantly work and artists work and yeah. supervisors work all to make that distinctive stuff so we're just so lucky to work in music um, you know there we go I'll drink to that and you know I remember yeah. Whitney telling me one time that you know she loved film but you know music is forever and I think that's true more yeah. and more I think of that true well let's talk about your set tonight some forever music you know, that you're going to be uh, sharing with us this evening yes i, you know, I got you, you talked up. about uh, yeah how you were going to approach it it turned <laughs> it turned a few times i did you know i wanted to put together a list of um our, you know things that celebrated women artists and and writers and a lot of the kind of like the, the the women that also are working with women engineers and are women producers. You went full and girl power artists. style. This is, this is girl, girl power. power. Women empowerment, huh? This is Me Too right here. All girls. Leaving, leaving the boys go behind. Goddesses. <laughs> it's not time's up. It's like, you know, time's and up. I just wanted to say, though, I think women are doing great in yeah. music. Yeah, they, they do are. better, sure, but there's a lot more female executives that are running record companies than there has ever yes. been. Publishers. Hey, shout out to Shelly Pikin right Shelley here. Pikin's our right guest, our, our industry guest, next radio show, Shelly Pikin. Show, yeah. you know. The Shelly Pikin Empire. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, things can always Let improve, and I know that, you know, Neil Pornell's taking some heat. This week for something he yeah. misstated. Um, yeah. I, I knowing the Recording Academy and how much they try to do outreach and get people involved, yeah. and you know even with Jay Z, and they're, they're that's inclusive. one of the reasons I put group. you know Beyonce song in tonight because you know Jay Z wasn't coming to the Grammys for five years and came yeah. back when she got nominated for Crazy in Love and yeah. for Dangerously in Love, and he realized that you have to be in it to make a difference. Yes. And he talked about that this year at Clive's party and mm. that he's glad he did. And look, who would have thought there'd be so much hip hop, yeah. you know, in all the major categories this year. And that's a dream that a lot of that community have been working towards and getting involved in the recording academy. So no I doubt. think the issue is, you know, if you're not happy, it can change. It can change on a dime. Hey, you just I have to, you just have to I'm, get involved happy, and make it happen. I'm happy to hear your Why didn't going? you do this speech? <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to hear you're still going to Clive's party. You're still invited to Clive's party, you know? Yes, I Bodyguard am. just gives you a lifetime pass to anything you Clive Davis anything, does, right? You know? Because I know they were, shortening, they were shortening out the list this year a little bit. I heard they, uh, they couldn't invite everyone. I got cut again. It was crazy. Damn, Jeff Gray. <laughs> it was, uh, it was insane. It. I can't believe he did it again. But a good it's time. An amazing, it's an amazing show. It yeah. really is. Yeah. I mean, it is an amazing it's a good time. show. Good and, gathering. and it's definitely done with a lot of heart and care for music and, yeah. uh, and respect for artists and songwriters and everyone else. So it's, it's lovely. About. Yeah. All right. What are we starting with tonight? What are we going to What are we going to begin with tonight? We are starting with um, <laughs> I'm Every Woman, actually. We're starting what? with Whitney Houston. Uh, Whitney Houston right. right now, right, out, of yeah, out of the gate. And this is the club, this is the club mix, right? Yes, this is, this is a, a new release that came out uh, this year. They, they put out uh, unreleased Was remixes. it an anniversary? Was it an anniversary? 25th anniversary 25 of the Bodyguard. 25 years. 25 wow. years. Wow. And so there was a uh, Sony Legacy put out a new... Uh, New mixes of various things. So this was CC in the Music Factory that had been this released before. This is the before. CC Music Mac Factory yes, remix. Exactly. Well, this one oh, make man. me sweat. All right, all right. CNC I'm in. CNC were also they had a lovely day also on that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big one. That was they were very hot at the time. Yeah. All right, well let's get into it right now. This is Maureen Crow's yep. DJ set right here, Honey Pop Radio. Radio. Oh. Radio. Yeah. Oh. Ladies right. and gentlemen, give it up for Maureen Crow. Shit, I won. What a fantastic right. set there. What a great time. Wow, wow. Girl power indeed. Woo, yeah. Wow. Well, I thought it would be good to give Lord uh, her chance at liability here. I thought that, exactly. You know, we represented Vista Grammys, but, uh, you know, Lord is represented Honeypot. Yeah, she's yeah. represented. It's a great song, and I think it's uh, very telling in terms of that So let, let's, let's start from the beginning. Okay. Whitney Houston started the dance floor. 
right there. That was one of the earliest honeypot dance floor moments we've had. Well, I gotta say, I'm every woman. <laughs> I'm every woman was something that Whitney wanted. Whitney wanted to do. She, uh, we talked about Chaka Khan. Yeah. She Ch had Ch done Ch some. Ch Khan. Yeah, Chaka Khan. She had sang background vocals on one of her earlier tracks, and so she definitely wanted to do it. She was about five or six months pregnant uh, when she wow. sang the song. Wow. She's she was so it. happy, so thrilled, and yeah. I think you can hear it in the vocal. Like every. Oh yeah. Every bit of it, it is lifted, just it so pure. It lifted the whole heart. party right there. Exactly. And then we went into Alicia Keys, which I'm hoping people know that Alicia and Swiss Beats got the producer and engineering wing award this year. Nice. And at a special party in New York, uh, Maureen Droney is the head of the producer's engineer wing. She is an engineer. Um, I want to bring all this up so people realize that women are doing a lot of stuff that, at the that, Recording that Academy that and that that is a welcome home for them and they want more women involved yeah. and it's a great place. And Alicia's engineer that worked on all her albums and Mitchell is like we've been with her forever so is nice. another woman so it's women yeah. Helping Women, um, Maya Hesloff Fighter, it was written by Jordan Pruitt who is a Disney writer works out of Nashville, and that was in Serve Like a Girl. And That was a new one for me. That uh, I've not heard of. She's a brand new, she's uh, like 16. Artist I'm not familiar with, really? 16, 17 years wow. old. She's uh, being looked at by a lot of labels. Yeah. And what I love about that uh, recording and the song is that it's so quiet. Yeah. But it's it's that, like, you know, that disappointment of things like going away. Like, I kept thinking of the female gymnasts and what they were going through when sure. they were teens and all this kind of stuff and that they just keep on going on and there that whole spirit and uh olympic moment right there there's a song waiting for an olympic moment olympic moment <laughs> absolutely um you know the uh nina simone i wanted to play no, uh, after oh, that, christine was... aguilera with beautiful linda perry uh yeah. did a lot of music for us of like a girl yes, yes. with pat benatar but linda perry is a Producer, engineer, writer, phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you know, her and Christina and her and Pink and whoever, whatever woman or any artist that she works with, she just brings it up to a whole other level. Yeah. And I think with this playlist, I just wanted to people to remind people that, you know, women are doing it and they're doing it. They've been doing it a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, Nina Simone's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. Uh, she is one of the most licensed artists, well, according to Tune Fine. Yeah. So, you know, their legacy goes on and on, course, and uh, I wanted to bring that up. Um, the reason I wanted to I wanted to play you guys Tessa Violet. She is uh, has like a million plus followers on YouTube. Yeah. She is uh, on you know touring, making all these things happen. I love her songs. Crush is great. She's got another great great song that I love called Bad Idea wow. about being attracted to the wrong guy, but thinking of going for it anyway. <laughs> Um, so she, Tessa Violet, definitely check her out. Very licensable, and I think someone should definitely watch. Good, um, good. See, there's new discovery in here. There's in your set. new there's, discovery. There's new stuff. I wanted there's to give you some. Stuff. You know, I was trying to do this theme about women doing it now, doing it in the past, doing it every day, doing the hard work, and getting you know getting the results. Yeah, I, yeah. I brought up Beyonce with Crazy in Love because Jay-Z spoke about it at the Grammys when he was honored at Clive Davis's party. Yeah. That he stopped going to the Grammys, he stopped getting involved with the Grammys when hip-hop wasn't getting nominated, but came back when Beyonce was nominated for Crazy in Love and stayed involved. And, you know, his thing is that he realized if you want change, if you want anything to change, it is not going to happen if you stay at home. Got to be active. You have to get involved in every right. single way to make a difference. And, uh, and listen, he was honored at that. Hip Hop yeah. had a huge night, obviously, of and rap. And Story was, of OJ is a great track. And that was like 10, 15 years of the making. That didn't happen. It's a membership organization, so you got to be a member. you got to get involved in it. Um, Andre Day, stand up for something. You know, Diane Warren wrote this, and we all know Diane is yeah. just a writer, writer. She writes, 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 every writes. Every day, a song every day. A song every day, you know? And so Workhorse. that is a woman who has been doing it and doing it and doing it. And I just yeah. love what doing this song it, has to say. I know right. it's been kind of adapted by a lot of protests people to stand up for something. Of course. Marshall's That's a great the, movie. Yeah, the Marshall, the Marshall soundtrack. If you guys have not seen Marshall, definitely see Marshall. Yeah, it's a really good film. It is a really good film about the early days of, you know, legal work in the civil rights movement. 
And the, but the big message of it is that, y you know, you think you can just make it somebody else's problem to solve. No, it's everybody's, yeah. no matter what it is. So it's really great. I and then moved, the closer. The uh, closer, closer was pink because nothing epitomizes more me, me than a woman who just like does what she wants, says what she wants, and you know goes full out and yeah. uh, and celebrates it. And yeah. you know there's there was so many women to talk about when I put this playlist together that it got too too much yeah. because we have a lot to say. And I think uh, I don't think anyone's saying women aren't stepping up. I yeah. just think they just want more and get more involved in the politics of things think, to make it better. Do you think he was asking for another step up movie and he just flubbed it? <laughs> Yeah, that's what it was. Well, yeah, okay. I think I think it's, it's, the Grammys are a big family. There's so many musical genres. Everybody yeah. feels a little bit like they well, didn't get theirs. There's no way, you know, classicals hard. complaining, Can't or keep everyone happy. operas complaining, or you know, Broadway. Jethro Tull hasn't won in like 30 years. Uh, it's, it's a travesty. This and that, so. A fucking travesty. <laughs> but I, I have to say, if it wasn't for the Recording Academy actually recruiting me to run for the office and. Yeah. Giving me that background, the guild would not exist. That's true. The television true. academy award would path. not have existed. You know, so you got, and I, I just have to tip my hat to them because yeah. it's not easy. But there's so many more women involved than there ha and ever has been. And speaking of the guild, there is an award show this Thursday. Thursday night. That we should mention. Be you know, there Thursday night. Yeah, be there. Be the square. Ace, the Ace Check Theater. The Ace Theater. Downtown LA, you know, ask Maureen how to uh, how to get your tickets, right? <laughs> I'm on, buy a ticket. It's a place to be Thursday that's night. Right, that's right. It's worth it. All uh, right. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. I'll be there. Well, she will be there. Maureen, that was truly insp inspirational. Yes. Well, I you just know. thought I needed to tell a story, Thank and you. I promise next time it'll be all dance. So all long. Right. All right, work. I'll be. I'm down for that. I'm all down right. for an all party set. Maureen, Maureen Crow. Crow. Thank you all. Yes. Bye -bye. Yeah, give it up. Thank you so right. much. Maureen, we have so many great bands playing tonight, you know? Yeah. I yeah. love it. I Bentley, love all of them. They Bentley are, are taking the stage moments from now. Grace yeah. Blue, can't wait. Can't I'm wait. I'm super stoked about Grace Blue. The Yatones, yeah. Amara, yeah, Memento. Awesome. Memento. Party style, dance yeah. floor style, all night long, whenever we can. Fantastic. Ooh. All right, we're going to play another song before we get to Bentley on we're the stage right, right here. Live. Right? This one, uh, where are we? Where are Wiz we now? Khalifa. All right, all right, Letterman, Letterman. Letterman. All right, little Wiz yeah. Khalifa. Here we go, Honeypot Radio. Honeypot Radio. Shit, I, I would. Hope. 